In the previous two video clips, we looked at when a bond traded X interest and when it traded cum interest. Now, in order to help you to always be sure that you are using the correct calculation, cum interest or X interest, we're just going to, in this video clip, we're just going to summarize when a bond will trade X interest and when a bond will trade cum interest. Right. So, it's the same bond that we've used for the previous two video clips. The bond register still closes one month before the coupon payment date. And now I want us to compare two possible transactions dates, the 30th of April 2015 and the 15th of June 2015. Right, now this bond has two coupon payment dates, 30 June, so I'm going to write 30 June in here. Twenty fifteen. So the coupon payment date, the previous coupon payment date to this date would be 31st of December 2014. And the next coupon payment date after this will be 31st of December 2015. Right. The register closing date are one month before the coupon payment date. So on 30 May 2015, there will be a register closing date. 30 June is a coupon payment date. And also on 30 November 2015, there will be another register closing date for this coupon payment, and the coupon payment date 31st of December. Right, so let's look at the transaction on the 30th of April. If a transaction takes place on the 30th of April, that will fall before the register closing date, 30 May. So it's going to be somewhere here, 30 April 2015. Right. Let's say that this bond is sold by person C is the seller to person D is the buyer. Right. So who will this bond, if it trades on 30th of April, who will it belong to on the register closing date? So bond trades on 30 April on the register closing date it would have belonged to the buyer, which is D. So it belongs to D, which is the buyer. Who will therefore receive the full coupon on 30 June? It will receive, be received by D, who is the buyer. So therefore, who should be refunded? C, the seller, should be refunded. And for what period should the seller be refunded? The seller should be refunded for this period from the previous coupon payment date until the 30th of April. So this is the period for which you are going to calculate accrued interest from 31st of December until 30th of April. So from the previous coupon payment date, coupon payment date until the transaction date.
And how will you do that? The way in which you will do that is to add this amount, the accrued interest amount, to the clean price. So you add accrued interest that will be owed to the seller to the clean price. And therefore we say this bond trades cum interest. You must remember that on the coupon payment date, D, who is the buyer, will receive the full coupon. So he's going to receive the full coupon for this period. But it's not fair, this amount he actually owes to the seller C, and therefore you increase the amount that he has to pay, you add the accrued interest, the bond trade, cum interest. Right. Now let's look at the other date. Let's say it's the same persons. They say this, we, we, we imagining that this transaction did not take place. So it's the same person. C is the seller, D is the buyer. And the other transaction takes place on the 15th of June, 2015. Now the 15th of June is going to fall somewhere here. Do you agree with that? 15 June. 2015 is going to be after the register closing date but before the next coupon payment date. So on 15 June, who will the bond belong to on the register closing date? The transaction takes place on 15 June. The register closing date was the 30th of May. So it actually belongs to C, the seller, still on the register closing date. The transaction has not taken place yet. So therefore, who will receive the full coupon on the coupon payment date? C, which is the seller, will receive the full coupon on 30 June. But is this fair? No, it's not fair. Because from 15 June until 30 June, it actually belonged to the buyer. So accrued interest should be calculated for this short period. And that amount of accrued interest should actually belong to D, who is the buyer in this transaction and the amount we've said should be calculated from the transaction date until the coupon payment date. So for that short period is the period for which you will calculate accrued interest. And how will we make sure that you receive it? By subtracting accrued interest for that short period from the clean price. Therefore, this bond will trade X interest. We take away the interest for that short period that actually accrues to the buyer and he pays less by that amount because the seller is going to receive interest for the full period. Right. So, in summary, what we can say is that generally when a bond trades in the period from the previous coupon payment date until the register closing date. So from the previous coupon payment date until the register closing date. For that period, 
a bond will always trade cum interest. And in, for this short period, from the register closing date until the coupon payment date, it will always trade X interest. And the same for the next interest period. From the previous coupon payment date, which is now 30 June, until the next register closing date, it will trade Cum interest and in that short period from the register closing date until the next coupon payment date it will trade X interest. So you have to make sure you understand when a bond will trade cum interest and when it will trade X interest and you have to make sure that you know for which period you should calculate accrued interest. When you are looking at a cum interest transaction, you will always use the period from the previous coupon payment date until the transaction date to calculate the accrued interest. And when you are looking at an X interest period, you will always use the period from the transaction date until the next coupon payment date to calculate the accrued interest.